together. This is my boyfriend, Mitchell. And we're going to run for an hour and talk about running and our running stories and answer running questions with our fancy, his fancy microphone. Yay! First up, my favorite workout, my craziest workout, and the longest run I've ever done. Okay, so my favorite workout is probably tempo Ks or tempo miles, but like kind of like a lot, so they're a little bit slower with like a short break, like 60 seconds. Um, and then the craziest workout I've ever done is 30 by 300 meters. Also, I did like 12 by 1K once, and even though I love tempo Ks, that one wasn't very fun, but 30 by 300 was crazy. And we only had 50 seconds of recovery and it was just like rapid fire 300 meter repeats it was crazy and i finished it and i was like i literally feel like i'm gonna faint and die but yeah and then my longest run i've ever done i did last year around this time i did 18 miles which was crazy two more miles and i would have hit 20. but anyway yeah that's that and so my favorite workout has probably been the steeple workouts I've been doing as of late, which are mainly 400s and Ks with jumps. Um, they've gotten progressively easier doing lots of jumps. I think I've jumped like 80 times in the past week or two, which is pretty good. Um, my legs were absolutely sauced at first, but they're much stronger now. Craziest workout, 6, 4, 3, 2, or no. Six, 600 and 400s and 200s and they were all out we got like eight to ten minutes of rest after each of the reps it was only a mile of work and i was absolutely dead um you can ask andrew o'keefe or connor griffin about it we ran like 49 seconds for the 400s and 25s for the 200s and the longest run I've ever done is 20 miles. Never doing it again. Absolutely not. I was bonking by the end of it. So dead. Not again. All right. So next is our favorite pre-race food. And this is breakfast. I'm going to go with the classic oats. Um, I put some peanut butter, honey, maybe a banana in there, some fruit. I keep it pretty simple, nothing too sugary, nothing too sweet, but it's going to keep me tied it over until the race and not too full, not too heavy. Worst thing I've ever eaten before a race, um, this is not breakfast necessarily, but I ate my leftovers from the night before, which was pasta, broccoli, and chicken. My stomach was so effed up. You wouldn't even believe it. I still ran a PR. Um, don't eat broccoli before you race. It's a terrible idea. Other than that, just eat with what you're normal and used to. Okay. My favorite thing to eat before a race breakfast-wise is I usually eat the same exact thing unless I'm racing at, like, night. But I usually still even eat this for that. It's some oatmeal with honey and a little bit of peanut butter sounds super boring and it is super boring but it ensures that i don't shit my pants or vomit so that's that and then the worst thing i've ever eaten before a run it wasn't before a race but it was before a long run and i had some carrots dipped in peanut butter and holy oh my gosh i had to be picked up you can ask emily sholkoff my tall friend um, it was the worst run ever. My stomach hurt so bad. I got so bloated that it was like actually painful. And we had to call our friend Fetty to come and pick me up in his car. And then I had to be in the fetal position in this back seat while we drove next to Emily so she could finish her run. But do not eat carrots before your run. Like actually, that was the most pain I've ever been in. So, oh, steak! Okay. All right, I'm ready. Careful of this. Right here. Are you going? 
this is the bridge of death. And as you can see, I don't even know how a train makes it across. A little bunch of skinny runners can't even make it across. And fun fact, I fell right here once and my friends, you know they're real friends because they were just laughing and took a photo of me before they helped me up. But I was bleeding a lot. So, okay. Oh, oh my God, it keeps going. This is freaking awesome. Ah! Bro, we gotta go a different way back. That is not, not. All right, next one is my high school PRs of my last year of high school versus my last year of college PRs. Well, it's not really my last year of college, but this year. So my senior year of high school, I ran 221 for the 800 and 528 for the mile for the 1600 and 1246 for the two mile 3200, which I was not very good at and I hated so much actually. Um, only race I've ever purpose or um, not purposely DNF'd, like pacing. I wasn't pacing. I just dropped out. I was a 3200, and uh, horrible. Um, and then oh, and my 5K was 1906, my senior year of high school. And then flash forward to college, I have run 217 for the 800. I'm not an 800 meter runner, and I never really run it fresh. I always run it right after, like 30 minutes after a mile or something. So that's that. And then my 1500 meter PR is 427, which converts like 446 mile. And then my mile PR from indoor is 451. And my 5K PR is 1651. And my 10K PR is 3602 or something like that. But I try to block that out of my memory forever. So yeah. All right, so my 800 meter PR from high school is 156 or 157. I don't really know. Pocket watchers, let me know in the comments. Um, my mile was 419. Ran that a few times. Unfortunately, that was the fastest time in the state of Kansas because Kansas is not that fast up until now. Um, my 3200 meter slash two mile was 941 from the one time I ran it because my coach forced me to and I hated it although I love the quote-unquote longer distances now uh, flash forward oh and then my 5k PR from high school cross country was 1628 I think and then let's see flash forward now to college 800 meter haven't ran it there's probably a PR from Juco and it's probably garbage I couldn't even tell you what it is. Mile is 4.03. Um, my 3K is 8.03. And my 5K is 13.57. So a little bit of progression, I guess you could say. All right, we're on our halfway break. Um, and my number one tip for injured runners, question I get a lot, is to stay positive and control what you can control because when you're injured like there's not much you can do about fixing your injury except like staying vigilant on like your recovery and icing and like swimming and cross training and all that stuff but like other than that you can't do anything like stressing out about it is not going to help you worrying about whether you'll ever be fast again is not going to help you um just like focusing on what you can control like i can go swim and not focusing on the fact that you can't go run and yeah just like finding other hobbies outside of running so you can feel like you're more than just a runner and you aren't like depressed because you can't run because um, it happens to everyone. It's not like something that just happens to a few people and like you're suffering alone. Like it happens. It's very common. Don't worry. Don't stress. Like even if it feels like forever, like you're going to be OK. So. All right. So I would say speaking from experience and what was it, eight months ago, um, my left knee was really bothering me for like two or three months and honestly i just spent a lot of time with friends and family um i didn't really care about like i was obviously frustrated but i didn't really care about like when my knee issue was going to go away um i kind of just stuck with like the people that love me the most and what the best for me because whether i continued running or not um they were gonna support me 
So I would say lean on the people that love you and want the best for you. That's what I would say. The Bridge of Death. No, they can't, so you have to cut this. But the PR or the Strava segment on this bridge for the men and women is kind of ridiculous. I think it's like 13 seconds for the men, which it's pretty long, as you can see. And then, do you know what it is for the women? Morgan Hikes has it. Check her YouTube out. Um, it's also very fast. It's probably like 15 to 16 seconds. And it's freaking terrifying. You have to sprint. Okay, so obviously a lot of towns have a, you know some type of sign dedicated to them. Um, this is ours. Update it. It's 60. Probably more. Probably more. Um, yeah, does your town have this? I don't think so. So as far as shoes go, I have a lot that have been gifted to me. Not even bought them, um, which I'm very grateful for. But currently my shoe lineup looks like this. Asics John Nimbus, Cloud Monster, uh, the Rebel V4, which are so sick. Great shoe, I would highly recommend. And then the Super Comp Trainer 2s from New Balance. And then my super shoe lineup is way too many Vaporfly 3s. Uh, compliments of my roommate Chris, because he doesn't like them. He's a marathoner. And then, what else? The Pacers, the Fuel Cell Elites, um, and I'm sure I'm missing one, but um, way too many. Oh, yeah, I mean, just missing them, but oh well. All right, my running shoe lineup is a little bit more simple than that. Um, I'm a simple gal, but currently running in the OnCloud Monsters. I like them. They're a little bit hard, but they're also like really bouncy, which is kind of an oxymoron, but I like them. I definitely can see how people don't like them though. Um, and then my other just like easy run already trainers are the New Balance Super Comp Trainers. I think that's what they are. Um, we got them from our team gear. And then for workout shoes, I have the New Balance Fuel Cell Elites and the New Balance Fuel Cell Super Comp Elites. I think they're the same shoe, just different editions. And then I wear the New Balance LDXs for race day. Those are my spikes, so. All right, we finished the run. Um, we did, I did seven and a half miles. But my secret hack, secret hack to running fast is having fun. Um, I always run faster when my motto going into the race is have fun rather than like you have to run this time or you have to get top three or you have to do this because then I just get stressed and sad and anxious and then I suck. Um, but the races where I just go in and have fun and I'm like YOLO just go out hard and finish hard. Um, those races are the ones that I A have the most fun, B do the best and C I usually PR or do really well in them. So that's my advice. My personal advice for running fast and having fun on the track is to make sure you get in line in the porta potty in time so you're not stressing before the race because it's uh, clearly avoidable and that way you're you're all empty and ready and light and ready to go. Um, yeah, that's that's my advice. I would say make sure you get in line at the porta potty on time, especially at big meets. It can be a bad thing if you don't. So. Alrighty. Have any more questions for us? You can comment them below and 